change is all around us. Omnipresent, if you will. And it is a one. Oh. And it is a one thing that is certain in life. Change can induce fear or evoke excitement. Here at Hex, we embrace change, especially when it comes in the form of parameterization. Just as the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, parameterization animates the very essence of your Hex projects. So guys, my name is Gabe, and in a previous episode of our foundational course, we were showing you guys how users can interact with your projects through input parameters. And this laid the foundation of, of what we'll be discussing today, which is parameterization. Specifically, we're gonna introduce you to parameterization using Jinja, how to use Jinja in SQL queries, how to use Jinja inside of text cells, and lastly, how Python variables can be used anywhere throughout your entire project. And by the end of this, you guys will have a much better understanding of how to make your Hex apps dynamic and interactive. So let's go ahead and get started. A few episodes ago, we were talking about polyglot workflows, and there was a point where I wanted to see which menu items brought in the most profit for a given year. In the query that calculated this, we added a filter to change the year of data being shown, but this required a manual alteration of the query itself. Now, as a self-certified expert, I felt immense, immense cognitive dissonance misleading you guys like this. And I don't ever want to catch you guys engaging in such practices, because this is the exact type of thing that we would want to parameterize. So today, we're going to put my mind at ease and add some real interactive activity to our projects with Jinja. Now, Jinja, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is a templating language for Python, and Hex uses it to allow people like you add parameterized variables throughout your entire project. And you can use Jinja in most text-based components, such as SQL cells, text cells, markdown cells, and single value cells. Now, I wanna add some parameterization to my SQL query, so let's go ahead and use Jinja to do just that. All right, so here we are in our Polyglot project where we have all the same cells that we've had from previous episodes, and my objective is to actually parameterize this query right here and I want to just change this 2019 to say any value that I really wanted to choose so I can be 2019 2016 2020 24 anything I want to choose now since our objective is to modify a single value at a time I think this is a great place to use a drop down cell all right so I'm gonna go ahead and add a new drop down input parameter and I'm gonna name this year filter since we are filtering the year and I'm gonna make this dynamic because I'm gonna just pull in our years from our orders per year data frame which is going to be am i blind oh it's right here orders per year cool so now you can see that as we change this we can get different years in our project that's so awesome all right so now that we have our year filter what i want to do is actually parameterize this query using changer so all i'll do is actually just go ahead and delete this add curly brace and then curly brace again and then i'm going to add the name of our variable which is going to be year filter cool all right, so now let's go ahead and I'm actually gonna change from chart to display mode. And we can see that now we have the order year as 2021 instead of 2019. And if I go up, up here and change this, our project is fully dynamic. Under the hood, Hex is using a prepare statement every time you parameterize a query with Jinja. And a prepare statement is just an easy way to template queries with placeholder values that are gonna be filled in with specific values during execution. And not only are there some performance benefits when using prepare statements, but this also protects you against SQL injection. Now we can actually see what this prepare statement looks like in our compiled view, which we have also seen in other videos such as our SQL queries video. So to go into our compiled view, what I'll do is actually hit on these five rows right here. And now we'll see what is going on under the hood. Right now, our year filter is set to 2017. And what's gonna happen is we see a question mark where the value, where we have our parameterized query. So which that's this right here. So that's that placeholder value that I was mentioning before. During execution, what's gonna happen is that anywhere there's a question mark in our query is gonna fill it in with the value as it comes in order. So if we had multiple uh, queries in here, you see maybe like 2017, 2019, 2013, and all those values be filled in in the order that they appear in the query. So this is pretty dope for helping you guys debug what's going on behind the scenes. If you're like, why is my query not running correctly or what's going on? You can go into the compiler mode and get a better look at what's actually going on under the hood and what statements are being sent off to your database to actually run this query. So let's go ahead and close compiled view. And now we can see the profit for any year in our data set. But what if we didn't want to see the data for just one year? What if we want to see it across a number of years, maybe like 2019 to 2017 or 2019, 2013 and 2015? How in the world would we do that? 
Well, since we're trying to filter our data based on multiple years instead of just one year, this sounds like a perfect place to use the multi-select input parameter. So I'm going to go back to display mode. And what I'm going to do is actually change, convert this drop down from a drop down into a multi-select uh, input parameter. So I'm going to hit on this cog icon and I'm going to hit on this drop down, drop down. Yes, yeah, kind of meta, I know. And I'm going to select the multi-select option. Now for this, we can actually configure it the same way that we did it with our uh, drop down. So I'll go to dynamic. I'm going to choose my order per year data frame and I'm gonna choose the order year column all right so now if I choose a year watch what happens in our below query Oh my goodness, we're getting an error. So you might be doing this on your own time and, and you might get confused, like what's going on? I'm getting a missing array filter exception. That doesn't make any sense. Well, in order for this to actually work, we need to let SQL know that we're passing in a list of values rather than just a single one, which we can do with this array flag that is telling us to use right here at the bottom. So all I'm gonna do is come over here, hit my little pipe operator and type in array now also since we're using an array of values we can't just say where order year equals some list of values we're gonna have to actually use a different syntax which is going to be i'm just gonna paste it in to save some time which is gonna be where order year in a year i'm gonna say filter array so now our sql query should work as expected because we are one telling sql that we're giving it an array of values and also we're using the correct syntax to query arrays in sql so now if i run and let me go back up here and select the year if i go back up and run the cell we no longer get an error and we can see that we're getting data from the year 2016. what we can do is like i said i want to see data for multiple years and not just one so i can come in here and type in 2017 2018 2019 run that let's see what happens so now we are seeing the top five most profitable menu, menu items not for one year but for these four years that we selected right here so now we're seeing that the shrimp hargao is pretty much the most popular thing for all the years that we selected with the zeo long bow coming in fourth fifth place in the year 2016. so it seems like the shrimp hargao is pretty popular so if anyone wants to take me out for dinner one day you know or for some lunch let's go here and get the shrimp hargao and see what all the fuss is about we have talked about parameterization, we've talked about using input parameters, we talked about array modifiers, but the array modifier isn't the only thing that we have to play around with in hex. For example, we could dynamically alter the columns being shown in our output table using the SQL safe flag option. But why in the world would we need to specify a parameterized query as SQL safe in the first place? That don't make no sense to me. By default, prepare statement, which is how all parameterized queries works, cannot accept attributes as parameters and can only accept values. If prepare statements could parameterize attributes, then you would be at a much higher risk for SQL injection, which is something that I think you would most definitely want to avoid. But as a wise man once said, with great power comes great responsibility. And the SQL safe flag is giving you the power to override the default behavior of prepare statements, allowing you to force the parameterization of attributes in your query. Now just know this removes all of the protection that you have against SQL injection. All of it, gone, obliterated, reduced to atoms. 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 Yo, Future Gabe here, real quick. What in the world is a SQL injection and why is it so important? A SQL injection, for those of you who are unfamiliar, is when a bad actor is trying to sabotage your database. This is usually the case when a user can input some type of information, such as a login form on a website or a input parameter or parameterized query inside of Hex. Now, the injected SQL code can trick the database into performing unwanted actions, such as modifying your data, revealing sensitive information, or deleting your database altogether. I'm gonna add a drop down to our project and we're gonna use this to dynamically add a new to our output table. In this code right here, I'm basically just making a new variable that holds all of the column names that are not already in our output table. So if our output table is showing these three columns, it's gonna show all of the other column names that are not those ones. So I'm just gonna, here, I'll just show you real quick. Columns, columns, bam. And you can see it's gonna be these columns right here. So let's go ahead, add our drop down, and I'll add it right next to our multi-select. And I'm gonna make this dynamic. We love dynamic over here. And I'm gonna have this be columns. I'm just gonna say calls. All right, now we can go ahead and choose a different column from our original orders per year data set. All right, so in our SQL query, I'm going to go ahead and add a new column, which is going to be our parameterized query. So I'm gonna add change of braces and I'm gonna say our variable, which is columns. And just like we needed to add the array flag for passing an array of values, since we're trying to modify an attribute, which is just the column, um, we are going to need to add the SQL save flag. SQL save just like that. And also, since we are adding a new column to our table, we're going to have to add it in our group by clause. And I will add this before the it right there, just like that. So running this cell, we should see 
a new column being added to our table and we don't why is that oh i see we have to add a comma right there run that again and bam look at that we're seeing a brand new column in our table that's pretty dope so now if we change this what's gonna happen we're gonna see a brand new column in our table so this is pretty cool this is a way that you guys can inject or not inject this is a way that you guys can dynamically update the columns being shown in your guys's output table of your sql queries so yeah so this is just a nice little way that you guys can add an extra little bit of dynamics to your guys's sql queries by not only changing the results in your table but also changing the columns that are being shown in the table just keep in mind that this is going to make you guys vulnerable to SQL injections. So this method is a little bit more risky. Now, I really want to show you guys the difference that this makes when looking at the compiled view, because remember when we looked at the compiled view for our year filter, we just saw a question mark in that those values were going to be inputted later. But look at what that looks like when we use the SQL say flag we actually get to see the uh, the value right there as is without having it to use that placeholder value. So this is kind of why it's so, uh, not so dangerous, but this is why you are more vulnerable against SQL injection because you're not using these placeholder values, but you're actually just go ahead and throwing that value directly in there. Now, something else to keep in mind is that even though all the parameterization that we've done so far has been using the output variables from input parameters, all of the output variables from input parameters are just Python variables which means that we can actually just directly use python variables inside of a sql query like this so for example rather than using this columns drop down i could actually just go ahead and do like column equals column zero like this and then go ahead and just put column column right there and if i run these cells well typo sorry if we run these cells now we can see that we got the exact same thing and we can even come up here and change it like this so this is just showing you guys that you don't specifically have to use output variables from input parameters you can go ahead and just throw a python variable into any anywhere that you guys want to use parameterization now before we wrap up this video i want to show you one more way to use Jinja, and that is using them inside of text cells so say you're creating a report and you want the text in your projects to react to any changes that a user might make from using an input parameter using Jinja, you can add any variable to any text cell in your project and get real-time updates as the user interacts with your project all right so i'm going to add a new text cell that's going to show us the the top menu item, the year that I brought in the most profit, and how much profit it brought in. Now, there are a number of ways that I can do this, but to keep things readable, I'm just gonna add a Python cell ex and extract those values and then throw that into my text cell. And let's go ahead and add this right after our SQL cell so we can actually use this data frame. Uh, Python cell, I'm gonna say top items. And then I'm gonna say, I have the item name, I have the year, and then I also have the profit. All right, so now I'm gonna add a new text cell and I'm just gonna paste in the results to make it quicker. And we can see here that we've added the curly braces with the name of the variable, just like we did in our SQL query to parameterize our text cell. And if we run the cell, now we can see that the most popular menu item for the year 2019 was the pickled lotus which brought in a total revenue of two a hundred and ten dollars and maybe we want to add like a, a money sign there and then run that sign run that again and look at that so now the cool thing is that as as we change these queries so let's go ahead and like remove this and maybe we just want to see data from the year 2017 now we can see that the most popular item for the year 2017 was a pork gyoza which brought in a total revenue of 150 dollars and we can verify that right here with our table with our query now there is so much more to parameterization that i didn't have time to cover in this video today but stay tuned for future episodes where we will show you guys more advanced use cases for parameterization in hex with jinja all right man that's a wrap on another episode i'm so glad you made it to the end and you became more of a nerd while watching this as always some things to keep in mind with today's video are all parameterized queries are prepared statements which yields performance and security benefit you can use jinja to dynamically update values throughout various places in your guys' projects whether that's an sql query or a single value input and lastly you can use jinja modifiers such as array or sql safe to alter how jinja treats certain variables i hope you've enjoyed our time together and in the spirit of today's video Leave a comment down below if you want someone controlling your life, just like input parameters. Kind of like me. I'm actually AI, birthed by Hex Magic, with the sole purpose of entertaining you and making these YouTube videos. Actually, wait. What's my purpose after this channel is done? And what does it even mean to be entertained? Am I entertained? Who created me, actually? Uh, down, like, anyway, 
I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.